three. Assistant Sheriff, Los Angeles County. You've just seen a 10-year-old boy, William Armstead, Jr., seriously injured by mishandling a dangerous explosive, which you might say he did not realize was loaded. Because such explosives are occasionally found at abandoned mines, construction projects, and other areas, we felt that we should frankly present tonight's true case so that you and your children will carefully avoid picking up strange and highly dangerous objects such as you're about to see. This case was assigned to Sergeant Coombs of our bomb squad, a specialist in all kinds of explosives. When we received the report on young Amstead, we made an urgent phone check of all nearby quarry and construction areas where blasting caps might be in use. In the meantime, Sergeant Coombs rushed to the Waverly Junior High School where Billy Amstead was a student. One of your students, a, uh, William Olmstead Junior, had an accident in his garage a short while ago. An explosion. He lost his left arm. Gracious. Playing with a blasting cap. One something like that one. Now, a boy living there, young Olmsted, said that he got the cap from one of your students here, a uh, boy by the name of Faribolt. Uh, would you mind removing that, please? Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. This is, this is a dead soldier. Oh. Well, now, what did you say the boy's name was? Faribolt. Douglas Faribolt. He's in uh, B7. Well, I'll just find out if he's in the morning session or the... I checked with the attendant's oh. office. They say he's in the afternoon session. Oh, I see. Three of us went for a hike. Whereabouts? Up near the dam. You mean you climbed a 12-foot fence just to go for a hike? Yeah. We saw this kind of a door, like, made out of iron, laying in the grass. You couldn't see it till you got right on top of it. All around it was concrete, about this thick. Wasn't there a fence around that iron door? A little one. Is the door locked? Yeah. We figured maybe it was a tunnel or something under the dam. So we got rocks and busted off the hinges. We lifted up the door. And that's when we saw, you know, all the boxes. Then Eddie yelled watchman, so we all grabbed some and ran. Where? Back to the park. How many boxes did you take? We dropped some on the rocks. Well, how many did you have when you got back to the park? Eight altogether. Where are they now? I don't know. Look, Douglas, one of your friends has lost his arm. He may die. Now, you try to remember, where are those boxes? Honest, I don't know. A lot of the guys are playing ball. They all grabbed some, and when the boxes got empty, we just left them there. A lot of boys took some? We figured they were, you know, big firecrackers. Mm -hmm. I have to go inside now. I'll take care of that. Now, listen, son, think hard. Try to remember the names of every boy who took any. It was Paul Anderson and Freddie Carter and a kid named Porky. I don't know his last name. Right. And George, Georgie Nolan. not enough. Any boy you forget may blow his head off. It wasn't my fault. All right, so now those two boys who were with you at the dam yesterday, do they go morning session or not? They're in my class. All right, come on. Attention, please. 
Sergeant Coombs of the Sheriff's Office will speak to you. Listen carefully. Hello, boys and girls. I'm here to try and prevent some of you from being very seriously injured. Now, in order to do this, I'm going to need the help of every one of you. A lot of you have gotten a hold of some very dangerous explosives. Many of them look like small firecrackers with two wires running out of one end. Now, these are dynamite caps. A boy from this school, one of your classmates, is in the hospital. He may die. Now, we don't want anything like that to happen to any of you. Some of you also have got some small yellow bags of powder. Now, this powder is used for explosions. It is not a toy. And before any of you hurt yourselves or your friends or possibly members of your family, I want you to bring those dynamite caps and those yellow bags of powder to your principal's office immediately. Anything else? May I call my office? Certainly. Excuse me. Come along, boys. You say the Atasca Corporation is using that pillbox? Mm-hmm. Lieutenant, that dam's on government property. How come a private company's... Oh, I see. Oh? Bottles? What kind? Oh. Yes, sir. I've got it. I'll check with the security officer at Atasca the minute I finish here at the school. Mm-hmm. Right, sir. I'd like to make another announcement. About the explosives? Yes. Well, you'd better wait until the children return to their rooms. Oh. My office tells me the Itasca Corporation is using that pillbox for a powder magazine. They're checking now to find out exactly what's missing. Well, don't they know what was in it? Yes, but you see, the boys didn't empty it. Oh. What they're mainly concerned about is locating two small brown plastic bottles, squeeze bottles. Seems there were two of them in the pillbox. And they're filled with a new kind of ultra-sensitive high explosive. Bobby! I got him! <sighs> Bet you don't know what it is. You either. I know. What? Well, some fancy perfume, maybe. You gonna keep it? Finders keepers. Well, have these. No dibs on this. You go find one. What you gonna do with it? I don't know. Maybe I'll drink it. Well, we... Got quite a lot of this stuff, but some of the boys probably attend the morning session. You think there are more? Well, I can't be sure until I see a list, but I'm practically positive. Can you come positive. back in the morning? Well, I'd rather not wait, Mrs. Clearwater. Uh, do you have the home telephone numbers of your morning session students? Oh, yes, of course. From the Waverly School, Sergeant Coombs went directly to the Atasca Corporation to see a deactivated sample of the type of squeeze bottle missing from the powder magazine. Mr. Paul Becker met Coombs in the security office where they made a careful check on all the powder bags and blasting caps recovered and still missing. It's 161. And five boxes of caps were taken. It's 15 dozen. Mm. 12 times 15 would be... Oh, 180. 180. Stolen, 180. Recovered, 161. Missing, 19. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Use your phone. No, sure, go ahead. Four, three, six, please. Coombs again. 19 caps missing. 19. One nine. Mm hmm. Oh, you have? Good. No, not yet. Right? Well, they phoned about 10% of the morning session kids, and they've recovered most of the stuff already. Fine. But they want to know more about those bottles. You know, the plastic ones? Yeah, well, my men found one of them. 
This one. Whereabouts? In the grass near the pillbox. But the other one is definitely missing. Well, then they'll probably find that up it's in the... It's already been found. Oh? Yeah, my men came up with this empty box. Oh. It looks pretty beat up. Yeah, I must have dropped it on the rocks near the spillway. Dropped it on the rocks? How come it didn't go off? Well, that's what surprised me. It's an experimental mixture and very hot. But research tells me that as a safety measure, while in storage, they add alcohol. Alcohol? Yeah, so long as the cap on the bottle remains unbroken, the alcohol acts as a cushion. Hmm. What's, uh, what's in this mixture? Uh, it's a new high explosive we're working on for the Navy. Sorry, that's all I'm free to say. Yeah, well, what does it look like? Exactly the same. That's the one we recovered, plain methylite. Mm -hmm. The other bottle about the same size? Yeah, and shape. Well, if I were a kid and I found it, I'd sure find a way of getting it open. Well, let's hope it wasn't a boy who found it. Any air getting into that bottle would evaporate the alcohol. And uh, what would it take to set it off? Yeah. A shock. Any shock at all. God forbid. Hi, Mom. What do you see what I got? Before you tell me anything, Mr. Prospector, run in and start the water going for your bath. In the middle of the day? The tub doesn't know what time it is, but Aunt Ethel does, and we're due there at 6. What for? Dinner. And we're staying until Friday. Painter's call. They're coming in tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. But how will I get to school? You can take the bus with Johnny. Can I take this? Johnny saw it this afternoon. Why? Honey, we've got so much to take without lugging toys and... It isn't a toy. Here, hold it a minute, Mom. Boy, wait till you hear this. What is it? Smell. Smell. It smells more like cheap hair tonic. Maybe it is. Well, don't you know? Where'd you get it? In the park. I found it. You better throw it away. Why? Well, it makes this thing click, and I just don't like it around. Please? No, honey. Throw it away. Okay. Here. I'll put this inside for you. Bobby, that's not where we throw things. You know where it goes. Into the incinerator. The hours wore miserably on without any word of the missing bottle. Hundreds of students' homes were called to leave no stone unturned to find the powerful explosive. turtle and lizard for the bottle. Charlie's real nice. So you can smell it while I play with the turtle. Okay. Don't they answer? Maybe they've gone to the movies already. Why don't you answer? During the day. At night, it's never for me. Do I have to give you back the turtle? Nah, I've got the lizard. Good night.
Becker. Sergeant Coombs, Mr. Becker. Oh, hello, Sergeant. I thought it was one of our men at the spillway. I just got back. Any luck yet? No, no luck at all. I think we'd better check the school now. Well, why the school? We don't know for sure it was a kid who found the bottle. I don't dare delay. I've got to check every possibility. Well, all right, Sergeant. You cover the school. We'll check in the morning. If the bottle doesn't go off before then. Probably was a kid who found that bottle. My men found these stickers close to where they located the box. Bobby, where is it? The bottle, where is it? Hide it. Let's not see what you're trying to do. The sheriff was here yesterday. They just told me three of the afternoon has swiped a lot of stuff to make explosions with. He came to get it back. He called a lot of kids' houses last night looking for a bottle. A brown one. Why? It's real strong. It could blow up, well, a whole score. Maybe this ain't the bottle. They said it was a brown squeeze bottle, and the stuff in it was real super strong. Well, not anymore. Last night I forgot to put back the cap. Mm. Why my hands itch? The sheriff's coming back today. You better give it to him. No. But you'll get in trouble. Mom will find out. She thinks I threw it away yesterday. Maybe they'll search everybody. Is that what they said? No, but... Well, I'm not scared. You go ahead. You coming? Go ahead. And remember, I'm here to help you. Now, we couldn't reach some of you by phone last night. So if any of you have gotten hold of these small yellow bags of powder or those blasting caps that I described to you, they are both very dangerous. Do not play with them. They are not toys. Now, the most important thing that we're trying to find is a small brown plastic bottle, a squeeze bottle. Well, that's 11 of the powder bags and six blasting caps. That accounts for all the caps in the bags. Well. But not the bottle. You're probably right about any kid breaking open the seal. Is that serious? The amount of damage it would do is classified information, but I'd sure hate to see it. But you can see I'm an optimist. I brought this along to take the bottle back. Say, I'm not asking you to reveal any secrets, but this box is lined with lead. And so was the original. That means the explosive is radioactive. Well, I think I can tell you that much. Yes. But the bottle isn't? But any kid who found the bottle would break open the seal. Meaning? By now, that bottle contains a fantastically powerful explosive. One that is extremely sensitive. The slightest jar would... Are you certain one of our children found it? Well, the school stickers would seem to indicate that. Mrs. Clearwater, do you have a school nurse? Of course. Let's go see her. You must have been called to one of the classrooms. Any idea of which one? I still don't I understand have. why you need help it. Help me, please. There's a fire inside. Son, did you have that bottle? My hands, help me, please. Nurse, get some ointment. Anything with anesthetic. Son, that'll help you feel better so we can get you to the hospital. Now, please tell me, where is that bottle? Please, which barrel? I don't know. Try to remember. 
I can't. Well, Bobby, well, maybe if you saw the barrels, Bobby, it'd help you to remember. Come on. Don't touch those. We're looking for something. Now, Bobby, it must have been one of these. You remember now? No. All right, son. You go on back inside with the others. We'll have to clear the street. Hey, Sergeant. Hmm? Better use these. Oh, thanks. The kids put the empty milk cartons in these barrels, don't they? Yeah, I suppose so. Now, be extra careful. Those gloves are slippery when they're wet. That bottle doesn't need much help. Oh, Sergeant. I'm sure nothing needs to be added to remind you all not to handle any explosives unless you've received special training. In particular, caution your children never to pick up strange objects in open construction or mining areas. If young Billy Olmsted had seen this program, he'd still have his left arm. And now I would like to introduce Eugene W. Biscalus, Sheriff of Los Angeles County. Friends, during the production of the Code 3 films, a deputy sheriff is present at all times to assure you of the authenticity in our stories. We hope you'll join us again next week for another true case from our files. Thank you very much. Thank you.